good morning and uh, welcome to Godly Thoughts. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we are talking about how God considers us, how God is mindful of us. As big as He is in, in all His splendor, He is mindful of us. So before we start, let's begin by praying. Father God, we thank you for your word. We know that we are ordinary people. We know that we have got challenges. But we know also that you are mindful of us and you think of us all the time. According to your word, which is in Psalms. So today as we study your word, may you show us your love. May you continue to guide us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. I am reading today from Psalms 8, beginning from verse 3. It says, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? When you consider the moon, the stars, and everything that God has made, when you consider the seasons from summer, autumn, winter, and spring, and then you consider yourself how small we are compared to the universe, Imagine that the God who made all those things is mindful of you. He thinks about you. He concerns himself with you, with the things that you concern yourself with. God is so great, and yet in his greatness, he thinks about you. You struggled with your mathematics, you struggled with your English, you struggled with other things in life, and God struggles with nothing. You forget, but God forgets nothing. You need a car to move from here to town, but God is everywhere. He can move to any place in a split second. He is there. But with all those abilities, with all that power, God considers you. It's like a, how you would understand a relationship between the maker of something and the thing which he made. The maker is not as great as the thing. The, the maker is greater than the thing which he made. But in this case, we are being told, that God, in as much as he is our maker, he wonders about the things which we think about. He wonders about the things which we think are important. And yet he is more important than anything we can ever think of. So I want to talk about how you should prioritize God, since God also prioritizes you, and how you must understand who God is first. David talks about the moon and the stars, but I will talk about ordinary examples. If the CEO of the company where you work, the company that is making plastics, the company that is making uh, pieces of clothing, the company that is making ice cream, if he announces that he is having his dinner at your place, you will go into your kitchen unit and take place that you have not used for many years. You will go and borrow a table because you, the table that you have does not look good enough. You ask your wife and your children to clean themselves up because the CEO is coming to visit you. Even if he tells you, don't worry, I just want to come in your house as it is. If he announces that he is going to sleep, you will be even more worried. You will go next door and rent a bed for him so that he can sleep on a better bed and not on the one, the rickety bed where you sleep every day. Why? Because you think he is an important person and he deserves great treatment. We have seen even in politics, when the governor is visiting the city, and all the councillors are busy grading roads and they are running around trying to make things look better. Why is it that you don't prioritize God? You don't prioritize His presence in your life. You don't prioritize the Holy One, the God of hosts, the one who controls even the breath in your life, but you prioritize people more. If a son-in-law is visiting his in-laws, people change relish. People can even eat chickens every day until he goes back to Harare so that he thinks things are fine, things are better. Why is that when God is there, you don't prioritize him? You don't take your time to read your Bible. You don't take your time to make God the center of your life. You don't declare to God the truth of who he is by your works, by your thoughts. You continue to entertain bad thoughts even though you know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You continue to entertain meaningless subjects you can even insult someone at church, at a church group. I've heard people insulting each other in vulgar. And yes, the, the, the group was formed in the name of God, to worship God and to praise God. But the things which are being done are opposite to what God wants. The things which are being done are contrary to what God wants. Why is that? 
people fail to see the importance of God. Let me tell you why. Sometimes when people receive too much love, they take it for granted. The people who truly love us, we don't truly love them back. The people who are willing to do anything for us, we don't do anything for them. They are happy to see us and we take them for granted. We know they can take the bullet for us, but we take them for granted. The people that we truly love treat us like rubbish. The people that we are ready to give our lives to treat us like rubbish. In Shona, they say, Kwa no wa matumbu, kwa no manye. People who are abusive get more attention. People who neglect and ignore get more attention. People who don't even take time to visit you when you are not feeling well get more attention. But the people who are with you through thick and thin, in every situation, you ignore them. You don't make them the center of your life. This is the same thing that the Church of God is doing with their Lord. Simply because God is there. Simply because God showed us so much love. Simply because we know anytime we call unto Him, He answers and He is near to us. We no longer feel like He is important. We now want things that we think are hard to get. Let me tell you, the hardest thing to get is God. When Jesus was finally on the cross where He was nailed, carrying the sins of the whole world, the Bible tells me that God's presence departed from Him. And for the first time, He felt so alone. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because when you know that God is no longer part of you, that is where you begin to feel so cold. The warmth and comfort of God goes away from you. The devil takes advantage. Job had the presence and protection of God his whole life. But there was a time where the devil asked for that protection of God to be removed, for that presence of God to be removed. Satan went and said to God, why is that every time you put a hedge around Job? This is why he always prays to you because there is a hedge around him. Job was, was protected by a hedge, a presence of God, every time. And for that reason, Satan wanted it removed so that he can touch Job. And he was betting on the life of Job and the faith of Job. And he was saying, if you remove the hedge around Job, if you remove your divine presence, your love around Job, he will curse you and he will leave you. Are you going to be like Job? Are you going to be the kind of person that when you feel like you are drifting away from God because you have lost the material things you had, you still try to make an effort to maintain a relationship with God? Sometimes we don't value God because we feel like whatever it is we get from God, we will always have it. We feel like God will always be there. We feel like no matter what, He will always forgive us. He will always take us back. We try to prioritize human beings. You try to prioritize your abusive boyfriend, your abusive husband, who talks to you and mocks your mother in your face. Because you know that he doesn't care about you. So you think he is important because he doesn't care about you. We have this thing twisted. We have this thing backward, people of God. We have to prioritize the ones who are there more than the ones who are not there. The word of God tells me, a mother can forget a, a, a child that she is nursing, but I will never forget you. Which means the relationship that we have with other human beings can come to an end. I've had times where families disowned a child, where families threw away a child. But I've never heard of a time where a man who is truthful and faithful to God was thrown away. Why is that you are quick to downplay your relationship with God? Why is that you are quick to downplay the value that God places on you. He created the earth. He created the universe. I can tell you right now, there are people who did less things than that that you think are important. Strive Masiwa did not create any earth. He simply created SIM cards in the network that you can use when you are communicating with your loved ones. But God created a network that you can use to communicate with heaven, not with someone in Chilunga or in Gutu. But you don't value God, you strive, you value strive Masiwa because of the material things that you see in heaven. We have got things twisted. The things that we value are too temporary. They will pass away. They don't have the gravity or the gravitas that they should have. When God gives us his love, we must value that love. Every time God does something for you, value it more than when people do things for you. Because people's love is temporary. People's love is based on what they think they will get from you. I know people who think I'm important to them because they know they can get things from me. The moment I don't have those things, they are gone. 
but God simply loves me as I am, more than my mother, more than my father, more than even my best friend. So today, simply because God is mindful of you, I want you to be mindful of God. Let us go before God and pray. Father, I pray for the brother, for the sister who is watching this sermon, who is listening to these words. May they be mindful of God. May their thoughts circulate around God. May they know that God is supposed to be the center of their relationships. May they know that God is the author and perfecter of their faith. May they know that human beings will come and go, but you remain. May they value you as much as you value them. Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. May this come as a revelation to someone who doesn't read the Bible every day, who doesn't seek God every day, who doesn't value the things of God every day, that they should value God, that they should seek God, that they should prioritize God, because God is the center of everything. When they do that, when they seek the kingdom of God, everything will fall in place. I thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every day. Amen. Okay.